There's a plethora of game style radios on the market today and they provide a lot of benefits like being very lightweight, compact, and they're ergonomically correct for the human hand. But what if you're a pilot that wants a little bit more, maybe something more professional, or maybe you're just like me trying to adopt a new style of flying like the thumb pinching hybrid method. These radios aren't the best for that. So today we're taking a look at the Jumper T18 Pro V2 and this is arguably the best full size radio on the market. Here's why. All right, so here's the box right here. This is the Jumper T18 Pro. This is the V2 version two and that's really important to know that this is the second iteration of this radio here and it looks pretty good this thing is pretty beefy pretty hefty and gonna be a change from what i'm used to um, but here you see on the box here pretty straightforward very nice colored box here with a lot of information here it says t18 right here it says five and one multi and that's not necessarily true in this case they just use the original box to put the v2 version in here this does not have a five in one it does have a four in one module which is pretty cool and some of the features here uh 2.4 gigahertz and it says 915 this does not have the 915 megahertz system in here you have a 4.3 inch ips color lcd screen on the top here as you can see very very important i'm not saying that this is the only way to identify it but this is the only way i can see on the box that this is a v2 it does say t18 pro and the version 2 and that's really really critical let's just open this up quickly and see what you get for your hard-earned dollars no unboxing knife required the first thing i see is a nice case which is pretty cool that it has a case included with this all right i unboxed it upside down and there's nothing else in here so all right, so we have our stickers, which is pretty typical of the jumper brand. We'll put it to the side, and here's your case. It's a really nice case, guys. Kind of like a hard shell case, but with some texture on here. And you can see how nice this thing looks. It says jumperrc.com. And this, you know, this is a really big investment, so it's good that they have a case here to protect that investment. Let's open this up, see what's in here. And wow, here it is. Here's your radio. Pretty cool. The first thing I see here is this screen protector. Here's a lanyard, so this is good. This is a significantly heavier radio than what I'm used to, like this Jumper T Light or these other game style radios. So it is significantly heavy. And this thing looks amazing, guys, with this carbon fiber look. Let's take this out, put this to the side, and then you have just a USB-C to USB-A cord and nothing else in here. Pretty straightforward so here is the radio guys and this thing is wow pretty pretty big there's a there's a reason why uh i didn't go to a full-size radio guys it's very intimidating there's a lot going on here granted you know i've been in the hobby for a couple decades now so a lot of the rc planes their radio form factor is very similar okay so the first thing that jumps out at me is this amazing screen big big screen let's remove this little temporary screen protector on there and this is a pretty nice screen this is a 4.3 inch screen it is touch sensitive so it does have touch capabilities on here um, this does have open tx on here which is the firmware on most of these radios so that's nothing new and the reason i mention is because although this screen is touch screen the open tx firmware software doesn't support touch interface the next thing i notice is just this carbon fiber layout here um, I don't think it's real carbon fiber, but it is a nice design. You know, it's not like tacky, bright, shiny uh, looking, but it's really nice, guys. Uh, we'll see how long this thing lasts, but pretty cool. Besides that, you just have this big old hook here for your lanyard, and I do see three little holes in there, so it is adjustable, so you can balance this the way you want to, depending on the configuration of how you want it. You have a big old speaker here, so... A lot of these radios have speakers so that it can talk to you, whether it be telemetry or your different modes. So that's a huge speaker here. And then the next thing here, which is the gimbals. This is the reason why I actually bought this radio was for the different ergonomics, the way to do a hybrid thumb pinch method. And hopefully, you know, I can adopt that with this radio. So we'll see. Besides that, there is a plethora or just a multitude of switches on here. This is a 16 channel radio, so that's pretty awesome. You can do a lot of things with this. Probably more channels that you need for an FPV drone, but if you're gonna fly fixed wing airplanes or helicopters, then these switches can do a lot for you. Um, we have two position switches and then three position switches. You know, they're everywhere. Three position switches everywhere. 
And as I said before, most likely I am not gonna be using all these switches. Besides the on top here, typical with jumper radios, you have a six position switch in the front here. And these are also used probably for fixed wing airplanes, maybe to change like a flap or to, you know, do something with landing gears or some kind of different configuration. Then you have all these switches here to do that. Besides that you have these dial knobs right here and they feel very smooth. There's a little detent in the middle, so you can feel that. And we'll just leave it in the middle there. On the side, you have two like slider switches and they move pretty okay. And they have a little bit of a detent in the middle. It's not very strong, but it feels adequate. This is my first time using one of these, so I can feel that in there. Besides that in the front, which is kind of weird, you have two power switches on here. And we'll talk a little bit about that once we start to set this radio up. Besides that, you have multiple trim switches. And obviously we don't use trim switches in FPV, but if you're using this on a fixed wing airplane or helicopter, then that might come in handy. All right, before we go to the backside, we have some more buttons on here. And this is how you would navigate the menu of the OpenTX system. And then you have this scroll wheel right here, which is pretty cool. It looks like it's made out of plastic, but you have this wheel that can turn and roll, and then you can push it in to select certain things. On this side, you have a model, a page, and a telemetry button. On top of it, you also have a system and then a return button for navigating the whole menus of the OpenTX system. Cool, on top here now, you have a couple of things, some plugs here and some ports. We have a USB-C port, and that's used for interfacing with the computer so that you can use this with your favorite simulator on the market. And it's also used for charging the battery in the radio. On top of you have a port and that's used for like a trainer port or a body box system. Antenna here is pretty straightforward, nothing different here, just a straightforward antenna. You can change the orientation of it if you wanna have your polarity correct. Now on the side here you have these rubberized grips and they look pretty good. Um, so that's, that's amazing, it feels good to the touch. Also on the back here, same thing, you have this rubberized texture. Um, you have this handle which can you know, telescope or collapse so it can fold down and fit into your case. And you also have rubber grips on the other side here. All right, on the back here, you have a couple of compartments on here. And the first one we're gonna talk about is the battery compartment and you just slide this off and then you have your battery holder here and this can take two 18650 batteries. I did a pretty extensive video on these batteries and on which one to choose for your device. I'll leave that video linked above and below so you can take a look at it to choose the right battery for your radio. And it obviously fits in here. You can use this little plug right here and it plugs into this. This can also accept some LiPo batteries as well. So just make sure you get the right one for this radio. And in here, you also have an SD card slot and there's also a micro SD card already in there. So if you're not familiar with these radios, the OpenTX system sometimes can use or utilize an SD card for things like voice or maybe Lua scripts to get more menus for specific protocols. And this has one already in there. All right, on top of that, we have a full-size JR bay right here, and that's used for other protocols. Say you wanna use a crossfire module or maybe uh, Express LRS Ghost Tracer, then this would take it, and that's what you would typically use this bay for. Besides that, it's a pretty nice radio. It looks like it's built very well, very sturdy. I don't see any kind of imperfections in here or any cosmetic flaws. So let's take a look at some of the specs and see what you get for your hard earned dollars and what makes this radio so special over some of the smaller compact radios in the market. All right, so the first thing to note is the dimensions and this thing is 800 by 900 millimeters. So it's almost like a square here, but a little bit taller than wider. And as far as the weight, this thing weighs around 888 grams, so close to one kilogram. And that's why you have this lanyard here and this lanyard hook. So I've never really used a lanyard while I was flying, so I might have to adopt that in the near future and see how that works out. All right, besides that, we talked about the batteries already. This thing requires two 18650 batteries, so that's pretty good. Um, you could also put a 2S LiPo battery in here if it fits in the back of the module base. So that's another option so you can bring to the field with you. This is a 16 channel radio, and that means to each function, each switch on here has a specific channel, and it can be expanded to 32 depending on the receivers. All right, talking about switches and inputs, we have two of our major ones here. These are your two gimbals. These are your Alps RDC 90 gimbals, and they're said to be one of the best gimbals on the market. Now, there's a big argument, a big debate about which one is better, if it's Hall sensors or these RDC 90 gimbals. It really doesn't say, there's no real definitive way to determine which one is better. 
But Jumper is charging a little bit more money for these gimbals because they think that these gimbals are a little bit better than the Hall Sensor gimbals. Just remember, these gimbals are said to have very good precision, just like Hall Sensor gimbals. But just remember, this is also a physical gimbal as well. So physical things that actually move tend to wear off or wear out over time. So we'll see if it's good, but we're talking about something like 1 million applications before there's any significant signs of wear on these gimbals. Okay, so besides these gimbals, these inputs go to the firmware in the radio. We're talking about an OpenTX firmware. And the OpenTX firmware is pretty much what we use to interface with the radio. We can change menus, we can bind to different drones, and we can set up different models and store them in this radio. So the OpenTX is a well-known open source firmware and is widely used by the FPV community. One thing to note though is that this radio can be updated with different firmware. So if you're not familiar or you don't want the OpenTX, you can also update this to Edge TX, which seems to be the latest and greatest firmware for radios going forward. So although there is OpenTX in this radio, there's a good chance I will be updating to the Edge TX in the near future. I will talk about that very shortly. The next thing on this radar is this big old display, and this is a 4.3 inch IPS display, and the resolution is 800 by 480. And no matter how beautiful it is, you're probably gonna be flying in your goggles, so you won't see it. But just remember, this is also a touchscreen display here. Um, now, unfortunately, with the OpenTX software or firmware, you can't use the touchscreen interface, but if you do upgrade to Edge TX, which I will be doing in the future, and that's a big reason why most people upgrade to the Edge TX software is because you have this nice screen here and you can't really interface it with OpenTX. So we'll be upgrading the firmware from OpenTX to Edge TX in the near future. So if you wanna see that video, hit that subscribe button there for you to be notified whenever I do drop that video. Okay, so one of the biggest reasons to move away from the beginner radios or game style radios is the lack of ability to bind with multiple drones. That's where these radios come in. They have what is called a four in one module, which is pretty awesome. Now it takes it a step further from the CC25 chip and these things can bind to literally or virtually any radio or product on the market. I'll leave a picture or a list of all the protocols this thing can bind to, but the list goes on forever, guys. All right, last but not least is this USB-C port. We talked about the charging capabilities, but secondly, this can be used for interfacing with your simulator on your computer, like what I have back here. And maybe if you're using this, this you're not a beginner pilot, but it is pretty cool to still have that function in a radio. All right, guys, so this radio looks pretty good. Let's slap some batteries in here and power this on for the first time and see how it looks. Today, I'll be using these Panasonic batteries. These are pretty high capacity batteries. These are 3,400 milliamp hour batteries. So very high capacity, which is good if you want long flight times. And that's what I want in the radio. I want the radio to last a long time while I'm flying. So let's make sure the polarity is correct on here, which it is. Let's see if I can plug this into the slot here first. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yep, here's the grooves on one way you can do it. Door here. Here it is, and we have two power switches on here. There's no instructions in this box. I guess I could download the instructions, but we're just gonna send it here. So I don't think it really matters which buttons I press, so let's just press the left one and see if it powers up. Welcome to OpenTX. Switch warning. Ooh, pretty cool. Very bright and vibrant screen. So it didn't really matter which button I press, it powered on. All right, you can see it there. It tells you what switch is in the wrong position and switch SE. Usually it's all the way down right here. And I guess you can adjust the volume there. I don't know how you get it. Can I change it? Nah. Trim center. Pretty cool. System page. It is crossfire config. Firmware logs, everything is in here pretty nice. Theme scripts. The screen is super clear, guys. I just wish it was touchscreen. It's like any other OpenTX radio. Models, any models in here? Nope, no models in here. Model number one, everything looks good so far. And then you obviously have to set this up. Nothing's gonna work. Heli setup, flight modes, inputs. I think this one is already 
Oh, that's pretty good. It's already labeled. Aileron elevator rudder. Yeah, this is, wow. I don't know if this comes this way normally from the factory. <laughs> I wonder if someone already had this. I don't think so. Let's see here, our sticks here. You can see all how sensitive they are. Literally no variance in them. So they're all calibrated and centered. Wow, these things are pretty size. And you can obviously change the background, all this stuff here. You would have your telemetry here. This is pretty amazing, guys. Keys backlit select. Oh, there it is. <laughs> all right, so that's how you, you can see the lights in here. So it was turned off. That's really nice. You can power it off by holding this and it goes off or you can hit these two together and it goes off immediately. Okay, so this radar here is pretty damn amazing. I'm in love with this. I just noticed that even it's a little different than the box. This box here, as I said before, is used for the first version. So a lot of things and specifications on the box isn't correct. Um, but I noticed that we have these two screws here and I'm sure you can use these screws here to adjust the tension springs on the gimbals. But as you can see here in the picture, there's none of that on the image. So they did obviously make some changes with this new version here, guys. So next video here, we'll do a setup on this bad boy, how to insert or program a model and then bind this to one of our drones, go for a test flight and see how it feels. So if you wanna see that video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified whenever I do drop that video. So you guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. And if you wanna see how the Little Brother to the T18 performs this jumper t light, I'll leave that video linked right here so you can take a look at it. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.